Good day, Earthlings! This is Chandarmay Asidilia. Join me in today's discussion about the laws of ecology. This is inspired by Professor Seferina Renario, our instructor in the Graduate Studies of Mater Dei College. First and foremost, what is ecology? Ecology is a study of relationships between living organisms, including humans, and their physical environment. It seeks to understand the vital connections between plants and animals and the world around them. Dr. Barry Conner was the proponent of the Four Laws of Ecology. He was a cellular biologist, college professor, and politician. He was the founder of Modern Ecology. He was a leading ecologist and among the founders of the modern environmental movement. During his time, he was known for his books with a closing circle, Nature, Man, and Technology in 1971 and Making Peace with the Planet in 1990. He was featured in 1970 edition of Time Magazine cover story entitled The Paul Revere of Ecology. With all the achievements and contributions to the world, he became famous with the Four Laws of Ecology, which his life reaches up to 95 years old from 1917 to 2012. He was devoted and shared in helping people to understand the benefits of ecological thinking and their purpose to our generation with the set laws of ecology. The four laws of ecology includes everything is connected to everything else, everything must go somewhere, nature knows best, there is no such thing as a free lunch. The first law of ecology states that everything is connected to everything else. It reflects the existence of the elaborate network of interconnections in the ecosphere among different living organisms and between populations, species, and individual organisms and their physical chemical surroundings. The first law of ecology states that we have one ecosphere, and that's true, which are referring to all of the living organisms on Earth that what might affect one generally affects all and consistently happening like a domino effect within the society. The situations reflect on whatever existence within the elaborate network of interconnections throughout the X sphere. These can be simplified, the relationship among different living organisms in the environment, and the populations between populations, which are tremendously increasing with their physical, chemical surroundings and behavior. To give you an example of this theory is the result of environmental possibilism to the humans and other species which generally connected with whatever changes or development in the competitive landscape. The first law has the principle of conservation of energy that can be modeled by the energy transformations along food chains and energy production systems. From the energy of the sun, giving life to all plants or the herbivores up to the carnivores, everything is interconnected. Interconnectedness is much more shown in a food web where everything is harmoniously connected from the producers of food to the consumers and back to the decomposers, which provide nourishment to soil for plants and seeds to grow. The second law of ecology states that everything must go somewhere. When something is being trashed, it disappears and simply goes somewhere. We need to change or throw away society's attitude in order to develop better methods of waste management and recycling. Byproducts of consumption go back to the environment. Everything that we throw away, pieces of paper, leftover food, peelings of fruits, plastic wrappers, used containers, have to go somewhere. Even plants and animals have their own wastes, bases, urine, dead leaves and branches. It is the law of nature that the byproducts of metabolism return to the soil acted upon first by worms, bacteria and fungi and then converted into minerals to be again absorbed by plants and eaten by animals. In short, they enter into a material cycle that is an integral part of the ecosystem. This is of course simply a somewhat informal restatement of a basic law of physics that matter is indestructible. Applied to ecology, the law emphasizes that in nature, there is no such thing as waste. In every natural system, what is excreted by one organism as the waste is taken up by another as food. This is a very sad scenario brought about by human irresponsibility. The third law of ecology, nature knows best. This principle is the most basic and in fact, encompasses all the others. Humans have to understand nature and have to abide by the rules of nature. 
in essence, one must not go against the natural processes if one would like to ensure a continuous and steady supply of resources. Mother Nature has developed all forms, processes, methods, tools, techniques, algorithms that are time-tested and developed as a result of experiments, trials, and optimization in her grand laboratory. There is no pollution, no waste, no energy crisis, no material crunch in nature. That is, nature knows best. Disruption in the cycle can bring imbalance in our environment. Most of the examples of this principle are connected with burning something, like burning farm waste. This results to the disruption of the cycle. Instead of this, we can just allow them to decompose naturally. The combustion products bring greater havoc, as in the case of carbon dioxide buildup, which results in the warming up of the earth, or the so-called greenhouse effect. Another examples are pesticides that can either kill vital organisms directly or induce genetic changes that result in resistant pests or organisms. Chemical fertilizers increase the acidity of the soil through time making a number of nutrients unavailable and thus unfit for the survival of plants and other organisms. History and our experiences are full of examples to prove the validity of this principle. In fact, this principle only surfaced when many of the detrimental effects of technology were recognized and coined their own as ecological backlash. There is no such thing as free lunch. Exploitation of nature will always carry an ecological cost and will inevitably involve the conversion of resources from useful to useless. This law applies everywhere where you can be able to ask someone for free. But passionately, we need to work harder to gain something that we need within the environment. We live in a world of hypocrisy. Eliminating for the environmental problems that we have created must be resolved accordingly so that the upland and the lowland areas will satisfy their needs. If within the government agencies where the officials are practicing graft and corruptions, it must be stopped and passionately do things according to the work you're doing for the common good and following for the rule of law. Therefore, whatever we owe to our nature and to someone must be restored and regained into a sustainable environment we are dreaming of. Greediness, graft and corruption must be stopped because there is no such thing as a free lunch at all. In ecology as in economics, the law is intended to warn that every gain is won at some cost. In a way, this ecological law embodies the previous three laws. Because the global ecosystem is a connected whole in which nothing can be gained or lost and which is not subject to overall improvement, anything extracted from it by human effort must be replaced. Payment of this price cannot be avoided, it can only be delayed. The present environmental crisis is a warning that we have delayed nearly too long. In conclusion, Dr. Barry Commoner's Four Laws of Ecology identifies the importance of environment and applies everywhere passionately. We need to take care of our Mother Earth at all costs. Similar thing as we take responsibility and take care of ourselves, not for greediness, graft, and corruption practices, but securing a sustainable environment for our children in the future and the next generations. Taking care of the world is the duty of every human being. Our planet is our home and we should take care of it. We have worked very hard and learned a lot about how our attitudes and habits can impact our environment in a negative way. We also learned how we can change our attitudes in order to stop or diminish the world's degradation and destruction. Now, it's your job to spread the word and let everyone know how important and vital is to take care of Mother Nature. The planet Earth thanks you very much. Heal the world, save the planet, save your life.